Okay, go. Right when you are. Oh, it's rolling. We're rolling. Okay, great. Welcome, everyone. Our first meeting of uh, 2020, the new decade. Uh, we have uh, two trustees, fiscal officer, third superintendent, fire chief is somewhere to be found, but I don't know yeah. where. Uh, <laughs> Inspector General Zah, um, valued member of the Fifth Estate. Oh, here he comes. And audience members, plenty. Welcome, everybody. We're going to take this moment here to issue an oath of office to uh, newly elected officials. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So, so well, I guess I'm going to do this. Only me. Oh, because hers is in. Yeah, so. Oh, that's right. You need to hold up your right hand, right? I do. I guess. Okay. I will. All right. You want to repeat after me? Sure. I, Chris Mutcher, do solemnly swear. I, Chris Mutcher, do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Ohio. And the Constitution of the State of Ohio. And will faithfully discharge the duties of Miami Township Trustee in Greene County. And will faithfully discharge the duties of Miami Township Trustee in Greene County. State of Ohio. State of Ohio. During my continuance in office. During my continuance in office. Amen. <laughs> I like the amen edition. Yeah, I know what else to say. <laughs> Good one. All right, now that we're official, let's call the meeting to order. <coughs> and uh, the first order of business will be the appointment of a temporary chairperson to call for nominations for the trustee board president for the year 2020. And uh, I need a nomination of fiscal officer Sullivan to fill oh, that position. I nominate Margaret Sullivan to be a temporary chair. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Um, being the temporary chairperson, I will call for nominations for a board chairperson for the year 2020. <coughs> Anybody like to move and I appoint somebody? would nominate Chris Mutcher. I would second that. Are you willing to accept that nomination? I will. Okay. Uh, then I'll call a vote. Uh, Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. I, I guess you can vote for yourself. Do you want I'll, to confirm I'll, that? I'll abstain. Okay. All right. So I'll now call for nomination for a board vice president for the year 2020. <clears throat> Board Vice President going once, <laughs> <laughs> going twice. Somebody needs to nominate would, uh, somebody. Nominate Don. Mr. Hollister has been nominated. I will second that. Is there any further nominations for Board Vice President? Hearing none, may we vote please. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Hollister? I vote yes. <laughs> Okay, now I move for, uh, or excuse me, I'm going to take a motion to adopt the minutes of December uh, 16th, 2019. Uh, I would move with a couple changes. Okay, hold on to those changes. Is there a second? Uh, yes. All right, we have a motion and a second. And further discussion? Uh, in the last, in the standing committee reports, mm -hmm. uh, Solid Waste District Policy Committee, he added only 7% of county residents are not contracted with a oh. uh, solid not. waste. Yeah. Uh, are not contracted for solid waste picking. That is, and, um, and I didn't have a figure about recycling. Well, how, what are changes that you make? Please note them and I'll make them. Okay. Uh, and then uh, somebody under road department, I guess Chris made this note, but 
Clifton's. The old tanker is now on Clifton Station, not the recently acquired. Well, isn't the recently acquired an old one? <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. Uh, and then on, under committee reports, complete census committee. Uh, I'm not quite sure how to reword it, but uh, all resident. The goal is to count all residents, including those that have been temporarily displaced due to the recent tornadoes mm -hmm. and college campuses. Yeah. And, and, and student people, oh, okay, yeah, well, yeah. Uh, let's, I'll yeah. say and living on. And students on college campuses, maybe. College campus residences. Residents. Okay. It's not like that. Yeah, I see, but you're, I understand that it's not clear. It will be fixed. So those are the changes that I would suggest. Okay. Any other changes? Hearing none, may we vote, please. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. I now uh, entertain a motion for the adoption of the minutes of uh, December 20th, the special meeting, 2019. I so move. I will second. Um, this was the uh, special uh, minutes, or excuse, excuse me, special meeting to amend the permanent preparations uh, for the mm -hmm. USDA funds available. Any further discussion? Okay, now may we vote, please. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Hoster? Yes. Thank you. Okay. I now entertain a motion to approve payment of bills in the amount of $130,980.36. Broken down general fund, $2,797.35. Fire fund, $29,904.14. Cemetery fund, $1,166.60. EMS billing, $18,000. There's too many fours there. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have any fours. Take one of those out. $34,032.91. Oh. Um, <laughs> that was a big month, or a big week. Uh, Road and Bridge, $4,649.38. And Capital Fund, because we have fun with in the capital, $74,030 even. Is there a motion to approve? I would approve that. Make that motion. I will second. Crockett moves and Mr. Hollister seconds. Any further discussion of the paying of the bills? <coughs> Hearing none, may we vote, oh, please? Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Okay. We have a certain amount of first of the year business that we need to attend to. Uh, following that, I would accept a motion to uh, accept zoning fees. I'm going to change that. To accept zoning fees for the year of 2020 as we were in 2019. I'll take a motion anytime. I would make that motion. And a second? I'll second. Any further discussion regarding that? Inspector Zoff, you have anything to add? No. Um, hearing no further, committee vote, please. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. I now entertain a motion to establish mileage, mileage rate for travel outside the township at 0.54 cents per mile. Um, is there a motion? I'll, I'll move. Is there a second? I'll second it. Chief, do you know if that's accurate today? Okay. Um, we're, we're having Google recess. Boom. Shazam! It's 57.5 cents per mile, down from 58 cents. So we've been underpaying. All right, we'll. We'll amend that motion to be 57.5 cents per mile. I, 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 I so move. But let's let's just I'll, I'll drop. Well, it's not making an amendment. I'll drop my previous motion and I move uh, adoption of the 57.5. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second that. Any further discussion regarding this? Hearing none, may we vote, please. Mr. Hollister. Yes. Mr. Meacher. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mr. Crockett. Yes. Uh, I'll accept a motion to recommend following board appointments. NBRPC. Uh, I, 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 I think we 
should have uh, Chris Mooch. What a good sense he's chair of MVRPC. And uh, Mr. Hollisiller will continue on the technical advisory committee I, member. I will. That's all right with me, but it conflicts with our me. Thursday meetings uh, of the, you know, for contractors. So I have, That's right. I have missed. Okay, well. Quite a uh, few. Um, but we also, I don't think. I follow the minutes. For the moment, let's. I, I, I don't think we're missing anything. Why am I missing so many meetings? Green County Regional Planning, or excuse me, Green County, Re County Regional Planning. I have been the member there. Uh, I will continue that, unless fine, otherwise. Fine with me. <coughs> Green County Council on Aging. Um, Mark, you were being represented for that. Consider. I did consider continuing. Mm -hmm. Clifton Union Secretary Res Representative from the Township. I, I like doing that. Okay. And the uh, Clifton Union Sexton. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Did we ever decide if we had to appoint Margaret as the as the secretary, co co Sexton and I, secretary? I thought. Shoot. In fact, maybe the sexton is also named, named by the cemetery board. I would say the cemetery board hires its own treasurer. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of which, why isn't Glen Forest listed here? Well, watch. <laughs> <laughs> we will strike through Clifton Union Sexton, and we will replace that with Glenn Forrest Sexton. <laughs> See how easy that was. Uh, Yellow Springs Economic Sustainability Commission. Uh, Mark had been uh, participating with that. Yeah. And I will do continue doing Grinnell Mill Foundation. Uh, I have been serving on that, um, and will continue so. So, uh, the complete census committee. Um, I believe, uh, Don, you were serving on that. Yes, I would like to continue. Okay. And similarly, the uh, solid waste district policy committee. Okay. Um, there's one more that's not. I don't know. Oh, I guess we hadn't put this in because it wasn't here last year. But the Yellow Springs. Developer. Corporation. No, okay. The Community Development Corporation. Right? Yes. It's not on there? C. We have too many already. YSCDC. <laughs> and then also, don't we name someone to represent us on Glen Forest, or does Glen Forest name its own members? You mean the board? We are the board. Okay. We are? Me. It's, so it's not just, okay. I'm used to the yeah, days of Perry Stewart when we got a mm -hmm. separate board. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, well, anyway, the, the YSDCC board. Um, when, when, this was, when, this ori when this was originally proposed last, uh, early last year, uh, I was approached to be a member of the board, and I accepted. And uh, with the under or with the internal understanding, I guess that I wanted to be, I was willing to be, and wanted to be part of the formation and the organization and the direction that the board would take, uh, considering the the township being part of it. And I really only wanted to do it for a year. Um, the year is basically up, but the organization is not quite to the point where I thought it would be, and especially considering that it also, the timing of it being the, the sale of this facility coming up. So for a very short amount of time, I'd like to attend just a couple more meetings to make sure that the sale of this, you know, is in line with um, 
with what we intended to be, and then hopefully I can convince one of the two of you to continue on as representatives. And I think it's a good idea to do it yearly, so then you don't get stale uh, in, in the position. And, and it is it is the kind of uh, seat that can be, I think, you know, does not have to be held on for eons in order to be productive. I think you, you, know, you can do it on a revolving basis. So anyway, if that's all right with you two gentlemen. That's fine. So you continue, but uh, are likely to resign in a few months. Yes. I'll support that. Okay. All right, that was the last position to discuss, and so uh, I'd entertain a motion to approve those uh, positions. I uh, so move. Okay, Mr. Hollis removes. Is there a second? A second, yeah. Any further discussion? Hearing none, may we vote, please. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. <clears throat> I would now entertain a motion to establish a meeting schedule for the year 2020 as follows. First and third Mondays of the month, excess, excuse me, unless they fall on a holiday, then the meetings will be on the Wednesday following the holiday. Special meetings will be posted on the township's website and the fire station bulletin board. Is there a motion? I would make that motion. Uh, I, I, <clears throat> uh, I'd like it to be on Wednesday at 7 instead of Monday at 5. had this discussion before. Yeah. Wednesday at 7? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is there a particular reason? Uh, for the gentleman who wanted to go from 7 to 5. No, no, wait a minute. It, when we talked about it before, I, I was asking for Wednesday. And True. You you guys acknowledged my uh, my main concern that there was a conflict with the two village councils. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not expecting to prevail, but I want to continue my point. But, and historically, way back when, the township did meet on Wednesdays, like 30 years ago. 30? At least. I don't hear support for my notion. I think that might fail. That might uh, uh, not. Well, there there must have been reasons as to why people couldn't attend. Uh, Maybe it was somebody's golf game. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I will. I'll second your motion on Mondays. Any further discussion? Hearing none, may we vote, please. Mr. Hollister. Mr. Hollister. Mr. Hollister. Mr. Hollister. Yes. Mr. Crockett. Yes. Mr. Hollister. Mr. Crockett. Yes. Mr. Crockett. Alright, I now accept the motion to set contracts with Green Township. Clark County, Clifton Union Cemetery Maintenance, and with um, Village of Clifton for snow removal and street repair as requested. Do you want to toss Bath Township in there also? No, no, no because Bath Township is, the sec is in the second year of their two-year contract. I thought we had one year. Oh, well, then there was one. No, we got a fifty-six thousand dollars show. Even better. All right, cool. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> uh, each contract to be negotiated separately and as soon as possible. Uh, is there a motion? I so move. I'm seconding. Any further discussion regarding that motion? May we, hearing none, may we vote please? Oh, actually, I wanted to ask. Okay. I'm uh, sorry. Who's doing the, the uh, negotiation on 
Is really anything going to change? Or <laughs> changing costs with Clifton? Uh, we generally will ask uh, our road administrator if the uh, prices are still reasonable as, as, as they've been set. Yeah. And so are we going to have yet another vote uh, when we actually have those contracts or this is basically authorizing this you is, to yes. sign them? Yes. This is it. Okay. Any further um, discussion? Mark? No. 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 May we vote, please? Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. I maintain a motion to adjourn to executive session to discuss matters of personnel. Okay. All right, so move. Moved and is there a second? Yes. Okay. I'll, I'll say aye, we have, and we'll go into executive session. Okay, we will, we will return to public session. I now accept a motion to appoint Colin Altman, Fire Chief, Dennis Powell, Assistant Public Fire Chief, and any additional full-time or multiple part-time firefighter EMT paramedics as needed, and all current volunteers of the roster. <coughs> Is there a motion? I'll make that motion. Mr. Crockett moves. Is there a second? I'll second. Mr. Hollis just seconds. Any further discussion regarding that motion? Hearing none, may we vote, please? Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. I now accept a motion to appoint Daniel Gulkin, our road department administrator, and any other part time employees as necessary. Is there a motion? I'll make that motion. I'll second it. There's a motion and a second. Any further discussion regarding that motion? Hearing none, may we vote, please. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Now I entertain a motion to appoint Richard Zopp, zoning inspector for year 2020. Is there a motion? I so move. I'll second that. Mr. Hollister moves. Mr. Crockett seconds. Any further discussion regarding that motion? Hearing none, may we vote, please. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. I now entertain a motion to appoint Brian Corey to the Zoning Commission, effective 1 1 20 and ending 12 31 24. Is there a motion? I so move. Mr. Hollister moves. Is there a second? I'll second that. Mr. Crockett seconds. Any further discuss discussion regarding that motion? Hearing none, may we vote, please. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Now, entertain a motion to appoint, appoint Barbara Craybeck to the Board of Zoning Appeals, effective 1119. Excuse me, effective 1120. Whoops. <laughs> and <laughs> ending 1231-24. Is there a motion? I so move. Mr. Hollister moves. Is there a second? I'll second that. Mr. Crack, seconds. Any further discussion regarding that motion? Hearing? Did someone talk with Barbara? Nope. We generally reappoint and they can resign at their. Okay. I, I know she can, continues to be interested. Good. Hearing no further discussion, may we vote, please? Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. I'll entertain a motion to establish 2020 pay schedule for all full-time employees at the current rate with a 2% cost of living increase retroactive to January 4th, 2020. Is there a motion? I so move. Mr. Hollister moves. Second. Mr. Crockett seconds. Any further discussion regarding that motion? Hearing none, may we vote please. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Okay, now I entertain a motion to establish a holiday schedule for 2020 as follows. We're going to you know, move things around just a little bit. Um, maybe. What? Martin Luther King Day, January 20th. Now, we're going to make uh, the day after Thanksgiving a, a paid holiday in lieu of uh, um, President's Day.
February 17th. So, do we understand? Let me state that again. Presence Day will not be a township holiday from this point forward. But the day after Thanksgiving will now be an official holiday day. Which makes like a four-day weekend for the, mm -hmm. the Thanksgiving holidays. So it would be November 26 and 27. This year, when Thanksgiving moves around. Yeah, that's true. But we are making a motion for this year. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So it's going to be February 27th. That? that? Uh, I, I've already talked to Colin. I haven't talked to Dan. Dan, you all right with that? So I don't will work Veterans Day instead now? No. President's no. Day. President's no, Day. we always keep Veterans Day uh, and I work know. it in lieu of the day. Okay, okay. Well, we're, we're getting there. Hold all on. Right. Hold on a second. So you don't have to agree to it yet. It's not all that. Make right. all of your suggestions before we. Oh, the devil. Well, oh, we won't. Well, we're not going to vote on it. But I just wanted to ask Dan because he hadn't heard that. Oh, okay. All right. So you'll you'll work on the seventeenth of February, but not the day after Thanksgiving. Okay. Next is Memorial Day, May twenty fifth. Independence Day, July fourth. Labor Day, July, September seventh. Now. Columbus Day, the week, can we change the name of it? <laughs> yes, we're going to change it. We're, we're going to change it and potentially eliminate self celebrating Indigenous Peoples Day unless you want to hold on to the, which I would encourage you not to, the switch from Veterans Day to now it's going to be the day after Christmas. To trade Columbus Day for day after Christmas? Yes. The day after Christmas? Christmas or, I'm Eve, sorry, Christmas, Christmas Eve. Eve. Christmas Eve. Yeah. But you will work Veterans Day. We will now. Yeah, okay. So, October 12th is now a work day in lieu of the day in lieu of Christmas Eve. December 24th. Right, thank you. And then also, uh, Veterans, Veterans Day will be observed. It's still a holiday, so. Right. Yeah. You got that, Dan? Yes. You will not work Veterans Day November 11th. Unless you, don't snows, you do it. Unless it snows. <laughs> yeah, unless it's snowing. I hope it doesn't snow. <laughs> uh, then Thanksgiving Day, November 26th, and the aforementioned day after Christmas Day, December 25th, and the uh, aforementioned day before, uh, New Year's Day, uh, January 1 of 2021. Um, is there a motion, or excuse me, is there a move? Would somebody please move to establish this motion? I would move. Mr. Crockett moves. So I'll second. Mr. Hollister seconds. Any further discussion regarding those changes? Hearing none, may we vote please. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Okay, correspondence. Uh, I'm just going to say we had some correspondence and it can be uh, reviewed at uh, your uh, leisure. There are two things I think need to be addressed in here. One is um, Margaret is going to make a uh, an invoice for the cost of interment of ashes of three hundred dollars for um, a person. I don't remember the person's name, but uh, but we have a, a fax number of the person who wants to pay for it. You're looking at me like um, lavender. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You good? Yes. Okay. That's why I told her because okay. she couldn't decide what day, so I had to go through her. Okay. And uh, there's a draft resolution which we'll get under maybe new business for designating the YSDC as our economic agent. And other than that, oh, they well, we did receive an. The amnesty legislation that we've been working on to uh, remedy the sixty-five thousand, whatever it is, dollar tax payment that we uh, owe to the county, uh, did not pass at the last session. It was attached to a bill successfully, and according to the aid for Senator Hackett, will be on the. Uh, uh, legislative 
agenda when they're back in session. So. So it hasn't passed yet. It wasn't the voted. The bill hasn't been voted on. Right. But a little speed bump, but I'm cut very confident that we're, we're on. Of course, we would argue that we don't owe it, but vote. that's another matter. True. And we won't have to because it won't exist after after the bill passes. So that's that's still good news. Um, I, I was a little concerned that there might have been some politicking or something, you know, internally, and that the head of the Ways and Means Committee didn't didn't like Bob Hackett or something, and didn't want to put the amendment in there, and you know, but that didn't that didn't happen. That didn't. So if it's in there once, I'm sure it will stay in there. All right. Any further correspondence in or out? Let's go to the fire department report. Yeah. <coughs> Since last meeting, we've had 56 EMS incidents, 29 fire incidents, 22 utility structure fires in Cedarville. Uh, we did five fire safety inspections. Most of those were concerned with um, destroying the food truck industry in Yellow Springs. <laughs> yeah, we'll um, get to that. <laughs> Uh, uh, under fire prevention stuff, we're looking at increasing or changing some of our permit fees. They've been the same since I think 1987 or something like that. So, uh, Nate's looking at that to adjust them to be in line with what other places are doing. We're also exploring the possibility of um, implementing a system of fines for people who don't comply with fire regulations. Mm -hmm. um, when the state changed the fire permit, uh, changed the fire code in 2017. It eliminated a lot of the methods that we had to make people comply, with it, which we never, I mean, we don't have that issue. But, um, we used to be able to do it through like court citations and that kind of stuff, and now it's really difficult for us to do that. So the state's recommending employing fines because they need to get close attention. So. Hmm. Um, but we've already done that, and I have to research how townships can do that kind of thing. So we'll mm -hmm. um, so keep posted. <coughs> uh, New Year's Eve went fine on our end. Right. So, once again, sponsored. People love the hot chocolate. We give out noisemakers. Uh, we had nine people on duty during the event, so those are the most we've had. Uh, some staff changes. Um, Evan France has left his part-time position with us. He took a job in his actual career field as a software engineer, uh, but he'll stay on as a volunteer. That's good. Yeah. Evan's been with us for uh, seven or eight years. Yeah. Now. Um, Two minutes ago, you hired Garrett Riley as a new volunteer, and he's resigned because he got a job as a full-time guy with Beaver Creek. So, Garrett Riley. So, congratulations, Garrett. Uh, shame for us, but... And then our new co-op student and volunteer, Ben uh, Timester, started today. But he's not trained. Correct. Okay. We're trying to find an EMT class for him. I had one lined up, and then they canceled it. So, mm. I'm hoping we can find another one soon, because he's really eager to become an EMT. Uh, we've scheduled a volunteer recruiting open house for Tuesday, February 25th in the evening. Uh, so between now and then we'll be, well, working with the newspaper perhaps to get the word out about why we need volunteers and <laughs> doing a direct mailing campaign, bless you, um, between our township and our new contract area. Because mm -hmm. uh, we really need some people. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll work on that. Have you talked to Steve Ross, Tom Pitstick, um name uh, because they had talked about doing some recruiting in Bath Township for us. I received from Elaine Brown via Steve their mailing list for us to use. Uh, yeah, well. uh, because they're, I mean, they're, they have no problem with us. You know, the best way to do it, they don't have an email list unfortunately mm -hmm. so it would be actual direct mailing, mm -hmm. uh, which we've done before. Mm -hmm. We just have to have DMS and uh, Bath Township people. Um, I'll have to have Clay Stan do a, a new car and a new mailer for us, but, uh, so yeah. Yeah. Um, and I haven't, I've met Cassie Lester, the new trustee, mm -hmm. but I hadn't spoke with her, mm -hmm. uh, but she's a nice supporter mm -hmm. of, of what we want to do there. So hopefully we get some people out of both townships. Mm -hmm. uh, how far have you explored social media advertising? We have done that and it's been successful, so we'll do that again. Um, I think we'll lessen the scope because last time we did it, we got a bunch of people from like Trotwood. Denver. Yeah, well, there's 
Well, there's a guy from uh, Saudi Arabia actually who replied. Um, his response time is a little long. Uh, but I think we'll limit it to <laughs> top our zip codes or something like that. Um, but yeah, it's very it's effective. In the 10 years that Antioch, is, Antioch College has been reopened, how many students have we had? Five. Five. Including them. Well, wait a minute. Good. Yeah, yeah, they were post reopening. That's what I'm thinking of. Julia and Stephen and mm -hmm. Tess. Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty good. Yeah, they're better actually. That's a better, bigger percentage than from the community. Considering they only had 18 students, though. <laughs> kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> Tom Manning, Tom Manning. Um, and, uh, oh, yeah, I need to request an executive session. From as a personnel uh, pertaining to uh, discipline. Before we, can I ask something else about you, the, the numbers you gave? How many of those were in Bath Township? I knew you were going to ask that. <laughs> I'm not prepared to answer that, unfortunately, okay. but not many, uh, probably. I'll have to check. We should have the preliminary year-end numbers for the next year. For you guys. Um, but I was out of the office Friday yeah. through this morning, so I didn't get a chance to run the back township report yet. Has, uh, is, is the uh, association, uh, have they taken any initiative towards planning a campaign to support the levy? I've spoken about it with President Houston, so um, I'll follow up with it. What's the next shift, which is it's early Friday. Voting. Uh, early voting starts February 17th, should say. All right, I will uh, talk to Brad about that. I'll take it. Um, and Brad, who's been president for four years, I think. Um, they'll be have, doing some whatever they have to do, but Brett's, Brett's going to be leaving us, unfortunately. So, uh, but until then, I think he wanted to stay on at least through the campaign because he's excited about that. So I'll just talk to him on Wednesday and make sure they're on. <coughs> and yeah. All right, I'd entertain a motion to move to second session at 7 40. No, 5 45. <laughs> Is there a second? And is there, is there a motion? motion? <laughs> We're getting there. I'm I, there. Yes, I move. <laughs> okay, Mr. Hollister moves. Mr. Hollister seconds. You guys are new at this. <laughs> and I vote for it. Okay. Good. Thank you. We'll reconvene in the public session at mm, roughly 5.53. Like a good clock. That's great. <laughs> um, no action. No action by the board as a result of the executive session. Uh, we'll move on. Uh, any further discussion or any further fire department business, Chief? None. Hi. Anything from <laughs> anything from the uh, board? Mark Don. I asked my question. Okay. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> one other thing. I just think it's good to have a, a plug that we still. We'll make address uh, you know, those green, yes. green signs. Yes, we do have green address signs available for free to Yellow Springs, Miami Township, Clifton, and our part of Bath Township residents. Did you say free? I said free. <laughs> free. Anything for free. Within our are? service area. <laughs> Within our service area, you can get these signs for free. That's great. Frizzle. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's just old numbers on. Oh yeah, we don't do the numbers on. <laughs> you don't want that, trust me. <laughs> just the great sign. Yeah, you get that out. Oh, it has over a centage. Oh, are there addresses? Mm -hmm. I assume there are numbers. But you see, you see what the green sign? Good idea. Oh, but it's not. It's yeah. past the emergency, you know. Well, they're free. I want three. <laughs> <laughs> Please. <laughs> Um, we'll get that information for you. How's the, cam how's the campaign for the water rescue gear? Oh, uh, as far as I know, the last update, uh, we had $1,825 of the raise. So awesome. Far. Is there a goal? Um, on our side, we were just happy to get whatever we could. Uh, but Lauren Miller, who was spearheading the campaign, uh, her target was about $3,000. So. 
keeps going up. Well, it's like 2300 the last time we met. Yeah, well, she said 3000 so. Well. She's the wonderful, and uh, we'll pass that boot. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> but anyone can get it. It's Lauren, so. <laughs> Great. It's been fantastic. It's good to hear. Yeah. Uh, when is the oil water separator um, inspection and cleanup being scheduled for? As soon as possible. Uh, sooner, I hope. So, sooner than possible. What oh. water? It's that big pit in the front that... Where? It's out there somewhere. The trench drain... Uh, uh, Are you talking about the new location? Okay, no, the new here, here. The trench drains drain into it and then it does its magic and and only discharges clean water out of it. But we're trying to get it inspected for our new new buyers. Oh, oh okay. That's why this is an issue. And Bowser Mourner, who's doing our phase one EPA or whatever the thing is, they're tired of having our file, I think, on their inbox, <laughs> our pending box. And so they've been bugging me about it. Yeah. Well, you might contact again. <laughs> okay. Um, any final words of where the food truck went? Is it gone? Yeah. It's been gone for a week. Should say. Really? Mm -hmm. um, I guess not. I'll mark that one. No, I, I, I honestly don't know. It was there last week when we did our... <laughs> I mean, you're talking about Ahar and you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Nate did a re-inspection with Ahar and he complied with everything with the exception of the separation distance from the building. But he had a plan working with the new owner of the property to move his trailer to the other side of the parking lot, pending the village being in the room tower and someone paying for that, for him. Um, but through this process, we discovered that a food truck can only be in one place for a maximum of 40 days. That's in the health code. Um, well, they have to be mobile, so to speak. Right. Uh, otherwise, they're not considered mobile, and then they're subject to a lot of other regulations. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know if he's moved it temporarily. I mean, he was talking about, um, Michael was talking about looking for a place in Beaver Creek, but the last I heard through Nate was that he said that had fallen through. Hmm. Um, he was hoping to stay here, but I, I, I'm not aware of what's, what else is happening. With and then the other truck that we've been dealing with, um, Miguel's Tacos, has complied with it. Mm -hmm. I mean, we found that the code requires, so. I know he moves his every once in a while. He takes it to events or something. Yeah. It's, it's not that often, but that will... How, do you know how long it has to be moved? Or can it not come back? Or? My, I had a conversation with the head of the... I'm not sure the name, but the, the division of public health that does the food truck inspections. Mm -hmm. the food inspections, I guess. Uh, and he said, you know, he had spoken with Akalesh just saying, you know, just move it for a weekend and bring it back. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if that's the thing. You know, the problem we run into is that's a health code issue, and technically I can't enforce that, mm -hmm. which is fine. But then if a food truck is there for longer than 40 days, I have to notify them. And I don't think health goes out and actively checks that, because why would a food truck stay in one place for yeah. that long? Um, so I, I'm not sure what's going on with Ahara. I'll see if I can make follow up with him. And, and see. We are working on, or Nate's working on a plan that other communities do that have a lot of food trucks um, in an effort to save us the hassle of inspecting them every single time they're here, um, doing an annual permit. Mm -hmm. They get inspected once for a year, put a sticker up saying that they're inspected, they pay a fee, and then we don't have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. um, Waynesville, Columbus, Cincinnati, uh, a lot of places do it. And save us the hassle. So yeah, he's working on that. Somebody. And do you give them a permit with the understanding that they will not park their truck too close right. to? Yeah, they have to comply with like all the rules. And for most of them, it's not an issue because they just come in for a day. You know, they come from yeah, street fair uh -huh. or something like that. Any of the festivals in the Bryan Center, or, you know, that kind of stuff. And, um, most of them are professional. I mean, most are professional food truck people. So, yeah. so that's so the, yeah. The, so we're working on this. The semi-mobile food trucks, not the right. ones that are going from event yeah. to event. Yeah, one of the problems we've discovered is, you know, speaking with the state fire marshal's office, they were like, why would, why would a food truck stay in one place? And that's because it's you know, spring, so things are different. Here. 
So, so are you inspecting bourbon chicken and French fry people? We're gonna have to, yeah, we have to get in there. And now I mean, like the the French fry people. <laughs> Um, that's a concessions company from Clark County, and you know, like basically at this point in the street fair, half of the food vendors are with that company, other half are with another company, and then there's zombie dogs. Um, so it makes our life a little easier because they're they're professionals; they all maintain mm -hmm. their stuff because they travel all over the state. Um, and zombie dogs is just good to work with. So, um, so we're hoping that they'll buy into this and do the permanent thing and make our life. And theirs, we're really. Yeah. They don't have to have us coming in. Some yeah. of them will probably have to do, I mean, yeah, the bourbon chicken guy, if he's there for a week, we can go and just do him once if he doesn't want to pay for the permit, not have to go back every day. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't get all that so. Yeah. <laughs> I imagine. Okay. Thank you. All right. Anything else to fire? Here we go. Some, somewhere, the new firehouse report went away, but. Well, that's because we'll this was the new, you know, Temporary. this was the annual, I mean, the first of the year agenda, and it was not that then. And I didn't think to put it on there, but we can certainly add it now if you'd like. <laughs> Perhaps for the next one? No, oh, it's up to you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right, in the new firehouse report part of the agenda. Yeah, that's what I mean. If you want to go ahead and talk about it, go ahead. Okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I would note good. that the chair takes instruction from the fiscal office <laughs> all the time. <laughs> uh, how's the prevailing wage reporting aspect going? We have the files in the office, uh, and I have done very few on site interviews. I see. Okay. But that I will. Sure. Uh, there, there's no. There's no one. There's no specific requirement for how many. Is that right? Oh, that's okay. Uh, the man from uh, Prebco, Will. I can't think of his last name. He specifically wanted to mention to me that, that I knew, I don't know what I mean, that the prevailing wage for apparently his union or his yeah. group or whatever it is went up 75 cents an hour the first of January, and is going up. Two dollars and seventy-five cents sometime in February. Now, is that information that you've got? Well, uh, that work. <clears throat> I didn't see the February one, but I've been forwarding each of the messages I've got. Mm -hmm. Did you happen to notice a seventy-five cent one? No. no. Are you think of attending Thursday's meeting? Yes. Okay. Maybe you and Will can just double check what that was about. I have no idea. Other than that, the uh, building, if anybody has been out there recently, is going up, uh, lickety split. Uh, we have uh, quite a few of the uh, load bearing walls uh, either begun or uh, fairly well finished. The ones to the front, the, that main corridor, um, is almost is almost finished on two sides anyway. So that's good. Um, the slab for the office portion of the building that would be everything from the brick wall that you see going up south uh, to the put in foundation is going to be the office slab that will be poured on Thursday weather permitting and uh, minor details being attended to in uh, finding dimensions for uh, some of the plumbing and, and the, uh, the interior walls but I think those have, I think those have been worked out, and so the slab will go and then be probably be covered for a, a couple of days. I know it's planned on raining on Friday, but the rain shouldn't bother. Thursday, too. Thursday also. Yeah. At the moment. Right. At the current moment. Oh, yes. It's supposed to be sunny this morning. But anyway, it we'll find out. We'll find out on Wednesday uh, if they're going to do it or not. And they're, uh, they're still on schedule, uh, roughly, and still on budget. Um, the schedule is a little bit, a little bit flexible with, with some of the uh, cement work and block work and had to be held up for some inspections, but uh, they've made up some time and some stuff they got done previously that they were, uh, didn't expect to get done until 
mid-January anyway. So on balance, the contractor says they're they're still on schedule. So yeah, I'll hold them to it. Anything else about the new firehouse? We'll move to the cemetery slash road. Okay. Well, we have a couple of burials. There's one uh, just before Christmas and one after New Year's. Mm -hmm. that there's four burials. Mm -hmm. And we had ashes today. We'll have another scattering soon sometime. Mm -hmm. At our leisure, I guess so. We'll take care of that. He cleaned up the leaves. Mm -hmm. And I'll have to dump more of the tents now. That'll be soon. Down here. Did you do any more work in the Oak Grove Cemetery? Not in the last week, but I soon as we get back in there. Mm -hmm. Got some accomplishments left. Mm -hmm. If you look for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Piles of this, piles of that. Mm -hmm. Take care of. <laughs> I'm a pilot. A pilot here. Huh? <laughs> yeah, as soon as. I did look back over 2019 and I noticed that we had uh, uh, 15 burials at Clifton Cemetery last year and 27 in Glen Forest. Wow. And uh, that's one both, at the. That's both ages in. Mm -hmm, yeah, that's it. And uh, one at the uh, Grinnell Family Cemetery. Uh, who was that? That was. Uh, Pam. Pam. Pam Singleton. Mm -hmm. And what's her relation? Her dad was a Mr. Grinnell. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, okay. Because uh, somebody, one of the Grinnells asked me <laughs> who it was. Uh, anything to the big family. Any further for the cemetery? Hearing none, how the roads do it? Well, I guess the potholes. Yeah. And a couple of trees that were clean up in the morning. Mm -hmm. Once they had all the phone guys. Right. One reason it's not is the village guys were there and they said, We've called the phone company, so don't touch it. Okay. Mm -hmm. But then the police called and said, You got to clean the tree up? Yes. Where is it? Right, right next to the CJ Bailey. They're crossing the old Brady Head right in center. We'll take that and there's one of my spalant that's dead. It's laying into a dead tree, a July tree, and then mm -hmm. you know, lay on the grass and kids would get a little bit laid down. You know, whatever mess they're making on the road. Before it falls out on the road, you know, we're gonna take yeah. it down there. So. Remember a few years ago when uh, I was all hot on getting 343 cleaned up off the back of the power and everything, you know. And I called at and and said, Why, you've got a lot of trees that are laying against your lines. And they said, A long way down. Yeah. And their answer was, Unless they break the line, we don't do anything about it. I said, All right, well, thanks. <laughs> Appreciate it. So. Some of those have been there for 10 years. Yeah. Even when they break the line, they don't do anything. Yeah. About it. <laughs> days to get out there. I've, I've stopped and moved stuff off the road because it, it, it blocked the road, you know. Being a nice guy that we are, we just do it. Not as responsive as that. You can have a Or the state. <laughs> it's not just up in the air. There's a big cable that crosses Jacoby Creek at the US 68. And the creek has been cutting down. So now the cable is up in the air. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, with water flowing over or under, depending on the, on the weather. They don't, they don't yeah, care. landline stuff, they're not really that big one anymore. Where was that? At US 68 bridge over Jacoby. Okay, for a man, anything else? Still got salt? I still have, I have plenty of salt. Plow's working? I'm really fine. <laughs> it's not getting much work, but it's, it's, it's okay. They, they do their calisthenics every morning just in case. <laughs> Saving a little money. Yeah. I think. Ultimately. Um, I'm going to try to have a quote for a mower by the next meeting. Oh, that'd be good. No. Oh, what? I want to replace a mower this year. It's in there. So I'll work on that, and I'll get you a bill for Christmas. I think I'm going down to dig a grave tomorrow to go to Presumia Township. Oh, yeah. they, they're having trouble getting their hoe in there. And they call them and say, yeah. Yeah, they just go down and 
that form of thing here. I'm not doing burial. I'm just going to take Yeah. Care. Which which cemetery? Uh, Stevenson or Jones River? Is that right? Or Jones or oh, Stevenson? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's Jones and Stevenson. Yeah. He called the date asking. I said, sure, you are. Um, you know, the, the lift that we have in the garage? Yes, sir. Uh, to your knowledge, has it ever been inspected? To your knowledge? Well, like, when they put it up? And should it be inspected? Uh, maybe. maybe we should check Do you know of anybody, <laughs> any other uh, departments that have lifts similar to that? Yes, well, we have a that, that lift is this fire truck, so I don't know if they have a regular post lift. Is yours a single cil single cylinder? It's a lift off each side, two posts. Okay. And does it have something that locks in once it's up? Oh yeah. Then there's not a whole lot that can go wrong. I mean, either it won't lift it up. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but I didn't know if there is a there's a required inspection. Or oh, it should be a required inspection. Do they have to go to ever say anything? Do they know that? Do they ever say anything to it? Yeah. I mean, would that be something under there? They would be familiar with it. Yeah, they'd probably be familiar with it. I don't know, she sent a letter a couple of weeks ago asking... It, it's always worked, you know. It, yeah. It works fine, it seems to, but if it needs to be checked and have a sticker, maybe we should get one. The question is, it's who does it? Yeah. yeah who does well, that's what I was wondering. Xenia Township or, or New Jasper, anybody's got one, and you could say, is anybody inspecting yours? And if they were, figure it out. Because it's not just something you're going to look at in the phone book. We're the only ones I know that, that we deal with that. Any that mechanic would have, any garage would have. Ask Eamon. It's the same equipment that every, every garage yeah. has. Yeah, we could ask Eamon. Yeah. Yeah, he's got Eamon's or Village 4 or, or Yeah, any of them. Auto, They're probably all hydraulic, <laughs> so that's what I was thinking. Or is it hydraulic? You know, yeah, they're like, all hydraulic. Like, yeah. like, well, like yeah, a motor true. runs pump to raise it up mm -hmm. down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Every, every muffler place, every... The only air on ours is to release the lock. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason we have air running out. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is a good point now. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else for a road? Let's move to the fiscal officer's report for the evening. Mm -hmm. We had our two annual start of the year resolutions. First one is to authorize the temporary appropriations. That's resolution 2020-01. read this. Okay. We are resolved by the Board of Trustees in Miami Township, Green County, that to provide for the current expenses and other expenditures of said sums, the Board of Trustees during the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2020, the following sums be in the same or hereby set aside temporarily and appropriated for several purposes for which expenditures are to be made for and during fiscal year. Set appropriations are said to be the exact same amounts as on December 31st, 2019. Now, therefore, the Miami Township Trustees approve these temporary appropriations and direct the fiscal officer to submit these sums to the county auditor. Is there a motion to approve resolution 2020-01? I make that motion. Mr. Crock moves. Is there a second? Oh, second. But I don't see it. I mean, there are no numbers listed to simply say they're the same as December 31st. Well, and actually, this is the, the I as a appropriations tax. Okay. budget. And, okay. and but the, and you're right. They aren't the exact same as they were at the end of the year. Um, according to the the, um, the way the code, the way it's set up in the um, with UAN and the, the state um, auditor's office, I'm only allowed to appropriate enough money to cover the first quarter. And because by the end of the first quarter, we had to have adopted our permanent appropriations. Mm -hmm. So I, this, I, honestly, this language that I just read is a, a little, I guess it's old, maybe. It's been the same resolution that we used for 20 years, so. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the last sentence, I think, is a little wrong, but I don't think we're in any trouble. Um, well, it seems like it ought to have the word attached or, you know, something. What, what, yeah, what are you referring to? These right here, the provision budget's attached yeah, right here. And then not as the same, so say these right here. <laughs> the following sums, the following sums, uh, however you want to inject and change this resolution, I'm going to open to suggestions. I'm going to say the attached. 
have instead of uh, instead of the following sums, yeah. the attached. Okay. Done. Okay. Anything further? I mean, that may we vote, please. Did we move a second? I thought we did. Yes, you did. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, Mr. Hollister. Yes. Mr. Crockett. Yes. Mr. Meacher. Yes. <clears throat> and then the second resolution uh, establishes our pay schedule. This resolution 2020-02, whereas it is the intent of the township to authorize the annual pay schedule of the board of trustees and the fiscal officer, and therefore, and whereas a maximum annual salary is determined by the Ohio, the state of Ohio's revised code. Now, therefore, the annual salary of the trustees and the fiscal officer is not to exceed the maximum allowable amount set by the state and is payable on a monthly basis commencing January 1, 2020. Is there a motion to uh, approve resolution 2020-02? I so move. I uh, second. Mr. Hollister moved. Mr. Crockett seconds. Any further discussion regarding resolution 2020-02? Hearing none, may we vote, please. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. I don't have anything else for you to do. You just got elected, so you had the potential to, for something to change, don't you? I don't think so. I think they they, they wanted, or somebody wanted to, in the last legislative session. But it didn't happen. I believe that was taken oh, out. I, I don't know. We'll, we'll certainly find out. I just out. know that, that those are triggered with right. being reelected. Sure. Uh, in that vein, I believe Margaret and I are now covered not by bond anymore, but by what is it called? Performance something. Yeah, performance something. <laughs> That's the official word. Yeah. Okay. We'll move the zoning inspector's report, Richard. Okay. Um, I issued one permit since our, I was last here for a single family residence on 480 West State Yellow Springs Road. That's right on the Miami Township edge of, 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 of that township. The one that's way back. Way back there. No, um, that's actually our, that's ours. Right? Yeah, it is ours. <laughs> no, I know, we double checked to okay. make, make sure. <laughs> um, anyway, so new houses, is, Schumacher Homes is building a new house for the Stampers, Ron and Don Stamper. Uh, the, um, Zoning Commission did not have a quorum in December. They didn't meet again. Um, so nothing nothing has happened on that front. The, uh, spoke at length with a, a woman who owns property in Miami Township bordering the village and asking me about what's the process for annexation. She would very much like to have sewer and water rather than, than well and septic. And, possibility of, of smaller lot size and, and changes and um, I said well you know I think basically you have to talk to the village council and, and mm -hmm. lobby your case it's not something that we are involved in but that's the first time that everybody's yeah. ever brought that to me I thought that was interesting um, I think I said at the last meeting and it's ongoing agraria is still pursuing the composting operation. Um, my understanding is they have been approved by BPA. They have the license. Um, and now they're discussing with me whether this can consider to be purely an agricultural activity, in which case they need no <coughs> permitting, or whether it's um, can it definitely can be allowed under a conditional use as an agricultural service establishment which is the way that I would kind of prefer that would go because then they sort of lay out to the public what it is they're doing and the public is aware of, mm -hmm. of the ins and outs of it. But um, I just received a, a letter from Laura Curlis on her behalf saying that case law says that you can't regulate this or whatever. So I'm looking over the first citations and, and have the, the prosecutor's office also reviewing that mm -hmm. so that if indeed I can't, you know, when I read what they're doing and read the definition of agriculture, I see something that isn't perfectly clear. Um, 
But if, if indeed there, there, there are, you know, rulings that have determined this, then we'll, we'll figure that out. And the other thing is the scale of the operation makes a big difference. In other words, if you're bringing in large amounts of material, processing it, and then selling large amounts of material, that's very different than bringing in some material, processing it, and using it on your own farm. Right. That's like buying sure. fertilizer, okay? That's another thing to be manufacturing fertilizer and selling it. That's not considered an agricultural activity. That's you know, considered a uh, chemical industry or, or whatever it happens to be. So we're still you know, talking back and forth on, on that subject. And that's, um, but no, I don't have any more details on it other than, than looking at that. And it's, it's interesting because in this situation, it's up to me to interpret what's an agricultural activity when, when the, it doesn't, the definition of agriculture for Ohio doesn't specifically say mm -hmm. this or that. And of course, if I say no, then they've got to go to the Board of Zoning Appeals if, if they disagree with me. Right. And, and so I'm saying, well, why don't you just have a public hearing and let, and let the, the Board of Zoning Appeals know what you're doing, and, and you don't have to depend on me trying to interpret it, they'll do it. But they don't seem to want to go in that direction. And, and on the other hand, I don't want to give the wrong answer. Right. Um, so as I say, I've, I've sent the, the, the information on down to the prosecutor's office and, and stated, you know, I let them go again. Here's my my rationale and why we're proceeding mm -hmm. in this way. We'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. Well, that sounds like the best course of action. Do you know physically where they're planning on putting this? On Houston Road, mm -hmm. uh, pretty much at the s south, it would be the southwest corner of their property. Mm -hmm. So I I don't know if you familiar with that, but their prop. There, there's a, a new house, mm -hmm. rather, there are older houses on Houston Road, then a new house, and then their property, and then another new house that's set further back. So between the two new houses right. is, is their land, and of that area, further towards the, the south is the, is the proposed site. Is, is, that, is that just a 300 foot section that goes way back and well, no, okay. And is the, is the frontage for... Just, just be... Okay. I said that sort of the, la, the there's a new house is part of the boundary. Well, actually, there's a 300-foot of frontage between that house and their property that's a triangle that tapers down that gives access to the property that uh, we, we I just issued a permit for to build a new house, but they currently use the access on Dave Mill Springs Road. They have permission mm -hmm. from the other property owner right. to do that. So they not built that road, but they when the, the property was was divided up for the auction, that would would have been a landlocked parcel without generating that strip yep. and the 300 right. feet of frontage. Okay, so it's not that. It's no, it's not that. No, that that's that's private property. That's not okay. part of the road. Right. I wasn't, I wasn't sure if they you know, swapped it or it's, something. It's one of the fields that they have been cultivating. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that that helps. I don't know what was in there this year. Mm -hmm. um, but and uh, it's the field is is more or less flat level at Houston Road, and then it starts to drop off mm -hmm. down to the there's a valley where the yeah. creeks are. Yeah. And it would be in that that flat area. Mm -hmm. uh, the the notification that you got in the mail has a little itsy tiny map <laughs> showing that. Um, it, but you can look at it and, and probably see that. But if you if you want, um, we can get on the GIS or something, and I can show you more exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I don't have any real hard and fast details. That mm -hmm. was just that notif official notification letter that came through that the EPA required mm -hmm. saying, "Well, it's going to be about here." Mm -hmm. okay. Anything else? Not tonight. Anything else for zoning, okay. Bart? No. Just wait till next time. All right, we'll move along to new business, slash old business. Um, a couple of things that don't really fit into, well, they kind of fit in, but. Um, I originally was going to recommend we uh, adopt a resolution this evening 
uh, to designate the um, to designate Miami Township, designate the Yellow Springs Development Corporation as our economic agent. Um, we have to do this before we can enter into a negotiation with the YSCD to purchase this building. Uh, but probably since you've been out of town, and you haven't probably seen it, I thought maybe we'd wait until the next meeting to, so, you could, so you could review it. Yes, no, maybe? Good idea? Okay. Can I ask what is an economic agent for the township? Well, we would be entrusting their judgment for the best economic use of this facility or whoever is their agent or our next next time we so do this. So it would be kind of like an assessment? No. Uh, kind of like a real estate agent maybe? Yeah, I mean, but, not, kind of but not necessarily looking not necessarily looking for the highest return on the on the property, but the best use and highest return mm -hmm. considered. And a real estate considering agent, what the township's objectives are. Yeah. See, my understanding is that uh, both by the board of the this special kind of corporation mm -hmm. being made up of representatives of uh, nonprofit entities and governments. Yeah. Uh, and there being a uh, economic plan, economic development plan that we have endorsed, that that board has said we will fo they will follow. Then we can. Then uh, a governmental agency, organization agency can transfer resources, whether it's land, cash. Because that's uh, part of the purpose of the, the as, whole organization in the first place. Right, as, uh, as a partner rather than uh, you know, with land, it would have to be selling at auction to the highest bidder. So, in, a, in a sense that the, the CDC has greater expertise than the three trustees do, so you're, you, you're engaging their expertise to find the, the best solution. Yeah, but we cannot, we can't stipulate in a sale that this is the best way to use it. We pretty much just sell it for the highest bid, mm -hmm. whether it's, you know, Hooters or... Okay, yeah, that's, yeah, <laughs> normally what you have, you have when you dispose of property, you have to auction. Right. But you, this is a way to do to do it without auction. Mm -hmm. okay. It's not going to be <laughs> You never know. <laughs> okay. So we'll plan on looking at that and then um, putting it up for resolution at the next meeting. I also was going to review our year-end cash versus revenue expenditures, but I think we'll put that up for perhaps the next meeting also. You say it's good. Huh? Let's just say it's good. Okay, it's good. <laughs> the, the last thing I had on my little list of things to do is, um, we had talked about this in the past, and now that it's 2020, I would like us to consider, seriously consider making an additional uh, $500 donation to the Gaunt. Good idea. Statue. Statue, fun, whatever that is. Is that something that you would uh, consider doing? Absolutely. I, I would, would you entertain a motion? I would entertain a motion to <laughs> I, do that. I move that we make an additional $500 contribution to the Arts Council, uh, Yellow Springs Arts Council uh, fund for making a, for paying for the gaunt statue, the wheeling gaunt statue that's actually been made already. I would second that. Moved and second. Any further discussion? Yeah. Hearing none, may we vote, please. Uh, Mr. Stop Crockett? Yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Uh, the last one is um, similarly the, I guess, I don't know if I brought it up at the last meeting or not, but I'll bring it up tonight. The uh, aforementioned YSCDC is asking their members for it. Huh? You did it. Really? <laughs> Great. 
is asking their members for a, uh, uh, a first quarter contribution of $500 to the organization for continual um, financial funding. Uh, and that implies there will be more quarterly payments? I have no idea. I, I thought, does every member pay 500 or are these somehow proportional to? Um, the, the village paid substantially more than 500. I believe the, I believe the school board paid 1,000. One of the other members paid 1,000 because they felt they were so much bigger <laughs> than some of the other members. Yeah. yeah. No. no I, yeah. I just. I was just thinking about. Well, is every. Yeah. How do you go about ass assessing different organizations that have different revenue streams mm -hmm. yeah. for this for this purpose? Yeah. If assuming that everybody benefits equally, mm -hmm. I mean, or has the same opportunities, but and and then, and then what is the total budget going to be of, of the organization? Right. Well, right now it's. That's undetermined because it, it's just not there yet okay. but they're you know they're trying to maintain the um, uh, the funds enough to um, really to get through the the sale uh, you know because they're going to have to have legal documents drawn up and deeds and agreements and this that and the other mm -hmm. thing and they're not out of money but they don't want to be out of money well, that's no that's reasonable and after the sale, but and it only cost five hundred dollars to get all the paperwork done for the sale of this building. Yeah, that's <laughs> It'll be a bargain. But, you know, after the sale, uh, at, which obviously is you know going to be negotiated, uh, they will have a certain amount of commission, for lack of a better word. So they are kind of operating like a realtor, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, Margaret said. So anyway, I would move that we uh, appropriate five hundred dollars. Transfer five hundred dollars to the, the Yellow Springs was it YSCDC? Mm -hmm. Did he say it? Yeah, yeah. I did. There we go. <laughs> All right, so moved and second. Any further discussion? And then may we vote, please. Mr. Crockett. Yes. Mr. Meacher. Yes. Mr. Hollister. Yes. Any further business this evening for the new year of twenty twenty? Hearing none, I entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Moved, seconded, and by acclamation we are adjourned. Thank you everybody. Thank you.